point eight is more. So I'm just trying to understand what's the additional amount between one seven seven eight and one eight three four. Yeah. So the difference there is the difference between just the C dot total and then C dot including the enterprises. So on the on the front side of the sheet, it's it's C dot only. Okay. You and I should take this one off. It is okay. a nitpicky point, but I. I, I still see 238.2 as enterprises, and I just assume that that should be included as additional on 1778. But we can talk about that separately. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we can, we can work through that. Okay. You're, you're on the same page on that. Um, all right, um, developing the exactly. revenue allocation plan. So um, I said I, I would kind of that, give you a little the more detail on exactly the, how do we take the revenue and put all of the puzzle pieces together into this sheet to come up with where the dollars go. Um, so uh, we would start with programs with dedicated revenue sources. So there are many cases where funds come from with very specific instructions about exactly what we have yeah. to do. FHWA is the best example, right? So CMAC, congestion mitigation and air quality improvement, those dollars have to go into projects that That's reduce congestion and improve air quality in non-attainment areas. So we put them in a specific place, in a specific program to ensure that they fund that particular program. Um, so we don't, we don't get any choice about that. And then uh, programs with pre-established funding levels. So there are items where the Transportation Commission has established a funding level. You know, the best example, RPP. So um, we, we take those funding levels and use those dollar amounts as that were decided in a resolution. Um, of course, those can change. You, you can modify those through subsequent resolutions and we'll make those adjustments. Uh, programs based on CDOT internal budget processes. So this is largely our operating, our annual operating budget. We always talk about cost centers. And we're right now in the process of um, kind of leading this process internally to establish all of those operating budgets for all of the divisions. Um, and we uh, take those totals and they typically go into two lines in this allocation plan. So agency operations and administration. Um, the fourth piece here, programs based on a set schedule. So obviously debt service, you know, any debt we have, there's a schedule um, of payments and we, we just simply have to take what's there for that fiscal year and put it in our plan. Um, and then finally, asset management. So, um, you know, there's a, a separate asset management process that you, you all go through um, and we just take those decisions that were made in that separate process and incorporate those. Uh, Bethany, question about risk in the uh, debt servicing, we all know there's inflation and interest rates are going up. So as you build this plan, you're building in some sort of flexibility so that we can cover ourselves and we won't be caught short? Well, yeah, I mean, I think any time we enter into debt, it's a set debt service schedule. So we know in advance the 30 years of the, the schedule. So um, th those rates don't change. Um, next slide, I think. Um, all right, so the next three slides, I just have a few highlights that I wanted to point out, kind of the more major interesting things that are happening in the budget. Um, you know, I kind of made reference to this when we were looking at the revenue forecast, but um, there's a, little, a few moving pieces with the faster fee um, situation. <laughs> so, you know, Senate Bill 260 and House Bill 1351, temporarily reduced the road safety surcharge, surcharge fee, that's the fee that um, goes into the FASTER program for two years, two calendar years, January of 22 through January of 24, and that basically impacts three, three fiscal years, so half of 22, all of fiscal year 23, and half of fiscal year 24. So FY 22 is in the past, no worries there. Um, FY23, this reduction caused a shortfall of $36.9 million, and we did receive a general fund backfill that covered that in FY23. Uh, and we have $10.2 million left over that we're planning to roll forward. We'll just sit on it and roll forward into 24 to help us out because we know we'll be short because of the fee reduction. So that will bring us um, an extra $10.2 million in 24. 
based on our revenue forecast for faster, we're, uh, have, we have an initial allocation of 49.3 million. So those two combined together give us a faster program of 59.5 million. Um, next slide. Okay, 10 year plan. So uh, we just wanted to call this out. These are relatively new, new lines in your one sheet. Um, there's three of them. So capital asset management, we have a uh, 68 million uh, dedicated to the 10 year plan in that line. This comes from the new um, Infrastructure and Investment Jobs Act, the new federal funding, the PROTECT um, program, was, which is about 22 million went into that line. And then the new bridge funds went into that line. Uh, capital mobility, we have uh, 51.9 million. Um, this includes the CDOT share of the carbon reduction program coming from that federal bill. And then um, right now, any residual flexible federal funds that we had left over once we built everything out are just sitting in this line. This is very subject to change. We have a lot of more adjustments to make in the budget, but right now this is just kind of a placeholder. And one additional comment I wanted to make on this, um, just to sort of reconcile back to the planning number we talked about for the 10-year plan of about 325 million a year. And you might say, well, geez, that's not 325 million. Um, to clarify, the, the $325 million figure was just simply an average over the course of four years. Um, and that is driven higher by uh, essentially about 400 million from the last tranche of 267 that we got in the last fiscal year. And then it goes higher in the later years um, as we assume some financing and as we saw a little bit of growth in revenue. So actually the 128 million in fiscal year 24 is actually a little bit above what we had forecasted and that is built into that overall uh, average of about 325 million. Sorry. Oh, okay. Sure. I'm just not that tall, I guess. Um, okay. Go ahead. When you say federal program, are all of those coming out of the IRA? Um, so not the IRA. So the IRA is the latest federal bill, and I, I, I believe we don't actually receive any funding from from the this Inflation Reduction Act. So these funds I'm talking about came from the um, yeah, Investment the, Infrastructure Jobs yeah. Act. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. We can go ahead and move to the next slide. Um, okay. So we wanted to talk a little bit about the maintenance budget because we need a couple of adjustments here. Um, 269 million was the amount approved from the uh, FY24 planning budget for, for maintenance MLOS. Um, we did have an FY23 resolution that increased that by 5.9 million for uh, TM1 salary and across the board salary increases. So we're just carrying that decision into FY24. So we've added 5.9 million. Um, and then we uh, finally have added 3.1 million to partially fund a new housing stipend program. Uh, the remaining portion of that cost um, will be covered by vacancy savings. Um, and then we're gonna kind of continue to refine this estimate as we develop the budget. And if we need to make more adjustments, we will. Um, and then finally, just noting, um, you know, we will have further adjustments uh, that we will need to make uh, based on uh, required salary increases made that those decisions made at the statewide level. So uh, we'll kind of address that um, across the entire department when we have those decisions. Okay. Thank you. Can we just go back to the 10 year plan for just one second? I had a question about um, how much is of this budget is actual dollars to the plan and how much is debt service? Are there debt, is there debt service on that? So the, the debt service is actually not reflected in that 10 year plan number. So separately in the budget, we have a debt service line. Uh, and that includes, I think probably the debt service you're referring to specifically, which is the Senate bill 267 debt service. So it is not, the debt service is not accounted for in those 10 year plan numbers on the prior slide. Uh, it is accounted for under debt service in the budget. So it's not as though we haven't allocated, but I think to your point, if you wanted to consider that 10 year plan spending, um, yes, it's not project spending, but uh, it, it is accurate to say probably that the, the dollars we put to 267 debt service is ultimately supporting the, the 10 year plan. 
Is it um, is it in, underneath the the um, budget debt service? Is it allocated as debt service for ten, ten year plan or not? Uh, it's allocated as we have a single debt service line. Yeah. Um, and then in the larger budget document, we do line item in the individual yeah. components of debt service, of which two sixty seven is the largest. And all of this then is to actual money to projects. Correct. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Um, okay, we can go to the next slide. Um, so lots to come still. Uh, decision items, I mentioned kind of we have an internal uh, budget building process for our annual operating budget. Uh, we're in the middle of that process. Depart our divisions are formulating kind of their decision items, which we'll get on November 1. We'll review, package them up. Um, anything over a million dollars, due to the instructions in PD 703 will be brought to the Transportation Commission for decision. Um, and then other other items, um, you know, have thresholds for executive management decision or, or staff adjustment decision. So all of those adjustments still need to be made. Um, administration budget, um, the, you know, the governor's budget request gets submitted on November 1st. There'll be a lot of items within that request that will impact us, common policy type items. Um, allocations that we get. So we still will need to make all of those um, changes. Um, also, I wanted to note maintenance reserve and contingency uh, reserve, those two funds. This draft budget does currently restore those full historical allocations of 12 million and 15 million to those two funds. It, if you recall last year, we had to zero out those additional revenue allocations to, ba to balance, to force us to balance, because uh, we were a little short on revenue. But right now in this draft, we do have those full allocations restored. Um, of course, depending on all the other moving parts and changes, you know, we may need to address that, but that's where we're at right now. Um, and then we do another quarterly revenue forecast update in December. If we see any big changes, we may wanna make the decision to um, change the budget based on that new forecast. Um, so that's a possibility. <clears throat> Next slide. Um, okay, finally, timeline and next steps. Uh, we will uh, update that administration budget, you know, after we after November one, when we have that information, um, and then come back and, and present the proposed draft to you next month. Um, and we will continue after that kind of addressing a lot of other items. So um, in January, if we need to make adjustments based on that revenue forecast, we'll take those actions. In February, we'll uh, present the decision items to you for review, um, and you can make any other additional changes as necessary in February prior to March when we come and ask for a final review and adoption of the budget. Commissioner, go ahead. Quick question. I didn't know if you can really detail on the debt service and Question is, I'm assuming that is debt service on capital projects that haven't been completed that have been over. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I so it, it it's basically um, was an upfront transfer that we received that is meant to cover multiple fiscal years. So um, we're showing it in the roll forward column because our debt service payments are larger than the amount of revenue we're able to allocate in FY24. Um, so it'll be kind of a combination of basically what we've, what we're conserving in addition to the new revenue that to pay debt service. And, and that is essentially re related to Senate Bill 267. It's primarily debt service rolling forward for Senate Bill 267. And if you, you may or may not recall, but there was um, prior to Senate Bill 216, a $100 million a year annual general fund transfer uh, to cover uh, Senate Bill 260, or to cover debt service partially on Senate Bill 267. Um, 260 suspended that general fund transfer and instead it gave us an upfront transfer to essentially cover a couple of years of debt service. So that's what those, uh, those funds are for.
Correct. Commissioner Brecky. Great, thank you for the presentation. Um, I, I was just looking at this sheet and I was looking at it online before and trying to make sure that I was understanding which columns were comparing. And so is it comparing column, the second column with the fourth column in terms of this is what the prior allocation plan was and then the one that says proposed available budget A plus C, that's what we're comparing with? Is it? Yes, so we've labeled the columns A, B, C, and D, which kind of helps. <laughs> um, so what I've been talking about is column C, FY24, but just for reference in here, we're including column B, which is the current fiscal year, FY23, the allocation plan that was adopted um, for comparison purposes, if you want to see year over year the changes. And then that first column A are those places where we know we'll roll forward dollars. So you can see the whole budget all together in which would be column D. Okay, because that's what I was trying to do is look more what's the comparison year over year. And so to me, it would be helpful to have that. Maybe there's a column that so shows percent change mm -hmm. so that we could see, because I was trying to do the math and like this one's going up and this one's going down. So to me, looking at this in the future would be helpful to have that comparative difference. Yeah, absolutely. Because it looked to me, and again, maybe I'm not looking at this correctly, but it looked like um, it's proposed for safety to go down, mobility to go down, and transit and multimodal to go down down and I didn't know if I was looking at that accurately or if that gets made up somewhere else but I was surprised to see particularly safety caught my eye and then as I started to look down at the other so and and I think um I think what you're probably seeing with safety is the fact is related to the faster fee suspension reduction so we we you are showing the amount being allocated to the program going down in fiscal year 24 and that's related to the the reduction in the faster fee but we actually received a backfill in the prior year to make us whole so it is going down but it's only going down because we received extra last year to make up for uh the uh lost revenue this year um, which is a little bit confusing i think in the case of multimodal what you're probably seeing is just the is uh variation with the multimodal options fund in particular so if you remember in Senate Bill 260, there was um, upfront funding, significant upfront funding, the multimodal options fund, and then the program stepped down. And so I think what you're seeing there is just us transitioning from some of the upfront funding provided by Senate Bill 260 to the ongoing funding levels provided for multimodal options under Senate Bill 260. Okay, that's, it's helpful to understand the, the why behind it. And then in particular transit looks like it went down quite a bit, it's one, 194 down to 135. So again, just being able to understand yep. the why behind the change, what is the change? Is it up or down? And then what's the why behind the change would be helpful for me. And is it then a one-time increase or decrease, or is it something that's anticipated to hold over time? Yeah. yeah. Again, I think the I think in both cases what you're seeing is just variation related to upfront funding in Senate Bill 260 and higher levels of funding that that you saw in 22 and 23. So if you'll note multimodal options, I think is the biggest part of that shift. You're going from about 97.6 million on the local side to 47.6 million. And again, that's that's related to the fact that Senate Bill 260 provided um, a significant upfront uh, infusion to those programs in fiscal year 22 and fiscal year 23 that it doesn't provide going forward. So it's not, it's not reflective of an allocation decision by the commission. It's it's reflective of just the uh, the the uh, the revenue allocated under Senate Bill 260. Okay, I appreciate you explaining that. It just and then as we go forward in these subsequent steps, it would just be helpful to know what's the implication of that change. Thank you. Any other questions from commissioners? Thank you very much. Yeah, okay, so um, we can switch and um, over to fiscal year 22. So I, um, looking backwards now, <laughs> we just closed out the last uh, fiscal year. Um, so, you know, accounting has completed all the entries, we've reconciled everything. And um, 
what we're going to do today is kind of talk about our reconciliation of revenue. So we forecast all of our revenue, and then now we have to look at the actuals and kind of do a true up. Um, and then kind of based on the outcome of that, what we'll do is bring you um, in a budget amendment next month based on kind of what I'm going to explain today. So um, let's see, we can go ahead and move to the next slide. Um, so at the highest level, um, this is just a summary of where we ended the year, um, and you can see I've split the table in, into inflexible and flexible revenues. Um, so obviously inflexible, dedicated to a specific program, flexible. These revenues, we um, adjust those dollars within the TC program reserve. That's kind of where we're able to uh, make those adjustments since they're, they're not tied to one specific program. So you can see there were some small over, under in certain categories, uh, like faster, local match, miscellaneous. These larger differences uh, were driven by you know, specific things. So other state revenue, you can see 26.1 million, it's a large number. This is um, basically aeronautics. So uh, of course they saw a large increase from the sales tax on jet fuel, just because of the recent higher cost of jet fuel. Um, so that was $26 million. Um, FHWA revenue, um, so that is both in the flexible and inflexible categories. Um, you know, we the OB limit came in a little bit lower than we forecasted, so that had an impact. And we also did a reconciliation of the OB limit that we used towards Bridge and Tunnel Enterprises annual debt service obligation. Um, so the FY21 and 22 budgets had not accounted for the MOU between CDOT and Bridge and Tunnel. So we reconciled that here in um, this action. Uh, for FTA, you actually see a zero in here because we account for FTA funding the moment it's received. We make those adjustments in real time. We don't take action through the revenue reconciliation process, but just informationally, we did see higher than um, forecasted revenues of about 38 million with FTA, largely from the, the federal bill. Um, and also, you know, the ARPA CARES and CRISA funding, the stimulus funding we received. Uh, finally, HUTF revenues were 18.3 million higher than expected really uh, due to higher than expected motor fuel tax revenues. So that kind of helped our bottom line. Basically, um, you know, we, we see 17.3 million lower revenue in our flexible category and then 19.7 higher in our inflexible. Um, and then keep these numbers in mind. I have a slide a little bit later where I'll give you a final picture of how this impacts program reserve and how it all plays out. But just at, at a summary level, this is when we went through and reconciled all of our revenues, this is what we saw uh, happen over the last fiscal year. Uh, next slide. Okay, the other part of the story to tell here is federal redistribution. Um, I think we've all heard at this point, but, um, you know, every year uh, in August, FHWA conducts a redistribution. Um, if you're interested in more of the background on that, we actually have a nice little fact sheet in the packet. You can take a look at it. Uh, but basically, um, you know, any states that don't use their full OB limit, that money's taken um, and, and redistributed to states that can demonstrate that they can use it. So, uh, you know, we submit an application and then we see what we, what we receive. And in this case, um, we received over 102 million dollars um, from FHWA redistribution. Question. Good commissioner. Can we request more? <laughs> uh, well, we did request more, actually. <laughs> but even more than the 120. Yeah. Oh, um, well, the request, so it's actually based on a full analysis of what we think we can actually obligate. So when we received the funding in August, we have to obligate it all by the end of the federal fiscal year at the end of September. So within a month, we have to have projects that have spending or that we anticipate will have a spending where we can obligate all of those funds. So um, I have kind of a, a wizard on my team behind the scenes, Eric Airbar. I think his team did over 800 transactions to obligate all those funds. So that's kind of, it's really, we have to have the analysis in place to be able to request gotcha. those. Good job. Thank you. The other interesting feature I might add is that um, you'll note that we actually requested less this year um, nationally. Uh, that was the case. And the reason for that is because one, stimulus funding, two, the 
the increase in IIJA meant that states had more federal money. They had more federal money. That meant they couldn't demonstrate that they could use as much new federal money. Um, and uh, the, the fortunate result of that is that for the first time ever, we actually got 100% of what we received. We almost, uh, we've never seen that before. Um, we typically uh, demonstrate that we can use a lot more than the feds can actually give us. Um, that was not the case this year. Um, okay, next slide. All right, here's a reconciliation of the program reserve. So we began October with a balance of 62 million. That does include uh, the reimbursement for the US 85 settlement loan from region four. Um, and then those two numbers you saw in that earlier table, the flexible uh, HUTF and FHWA and miscellaneous, sorry, three, three numbers. Uh, those adjustments are going through the program reserve to bring us to 44.8 million. And then we have a redistribution at 102 million. So bottom line right now, we're looking at a balance of about 146.8 million. And so we are putting together materials to bring to you next month, um, kind of a package of budget amendments to take the next steps around that balance. Uh, next steps, okay, November. Go ahead. So do we have a target level for our fund balance? So in the case, we do not have a, uh, a formally established target per, that is in policy. Um, what we do, what we have done though, is uh, done historical analysis. Um, and we've done this in the case of contingency and program reserve in terms of what is the you know, average level of spending um, within a couple different bands actually. And so I think the, in the case of program reserve, we generally try to preserve somewhere around 40 million. Um, as a minimum balance uh, for the, the cycles a little bit off with the fiscal year. Generally, it's, it's the, the year cycle following revenue reconciliation. We like to preserve um, somewhere around 40 million and because and that's uh, uh, based on historic spending is an adequate balance to, uh, to address uh, generally the requests that come forward to the commission. So long story short, our, our not formal target is somewhere around 40 million is a, a minimum balance to leave this process. Thank you. And I had one other question on inflexible. If you don't get to it, I'll come back to it. Um, sure, yeah. Um, so this is actually my last slide. I was just gonna kind of talk through next steps. Um, so, so if you wanted to go ahead and ask. So on the one uh, inflexible $26.1 million total, I think, which was over due to gas revenues, uh, does that stay in the aeronautics division? Does that board go through a decision on how they could utilize those additional funds? Yeah, that so it, those are inflexible funds. They do stay in aeronautics and that board does make decisions on how to allocate those funds. Mm -hmm. Thank you. November, okay, November, uh, staff will adjust budget allocations for the TC program reserve. So that reconciliation I just showed you, will make those adjustments, move those funds around um, to true up all of our revenues for the prior fiscal year. Um, and then we will we will come back and talk to you uh, about the, that program reserve balance, um, present a package of proposed amendments to utilize a portion of it and then kind of retain that minimum balance for critical um, you know, things that may come up. And then in January, just a broader picture, we will be back to present to you another look at revenue, the revenue forecast, uh, which will do a quarterly update. So that's to come. And I think that's my last slide. Questions from commissioners. Roll question. Sitting where you are today, where do you see the most risk? Because as a devil's advocate, I see risk in recession, inflation, and other things. And also, we've just been hit by unexplained, unexpected events, region four, we had the, uh, along the irrigation canal, highway 44, and then we had the bridge under US 34 last Friday. There's, it just seems to me that the costs are going up, costs of materials, et cetera. And I'm, what I'm focusing on is I think the TC may need to have more of a reserve than the traditional 40 million. Thank you. Yeah, and to that uh, point, I guess a uh, couple of topics. I think part of the budget amendment you'll see next month will will in, include a request related to the uh, cost escalation fund that we had talked about a few months ago. Uh, Bethany also indicated that uh, 
Uh, last year, we did not allocate additional revenue to contingency and program reserve. At this point in the cycle, that could change. We are. Um, so we'll be watching the balances close, closely of both contingency and program reserve, both coming out of this process, as well as uh, between now and finalizing the budget to determine kind of where we are moving through the fiscal year. And, uh, and then we can work with you later in the cycle to determine uh, based on that, do we, do we need to allocate more? Do we need to allocate less uh, given, uh, uh, given, given where we're at and given some of those risks? Thank you. Any RTD. Heather. Yeah, I just wanted to give an update and first start by saying thanks to the commission for the contingency reserve funds that went to Weld County Road 34. That was open last Tuesday successfully. And I'd like to say that the contractor came in at about 50% of the engineer's estimate and they completed about $100,000 less than they estimated. So um, we will be giving back some contingency uh, reserve funds on that project. I think we requested a million um, all in. We, we're still running the numbers, but I think we're going to be just over a half a million. So that's a win, more money to the to the big pot there. Um, and also just to give you a status update on uh, the brush lateral, uh, we got record time uh, service agreement with the ditch company. We met with the contractors on site on the 18th. Um, we're distributing the plans and specs on the 21st. We expect the bid letting to happen on the 28th of this month and then construction to start as early as November 1st. So we're moving really quickly on that. Just want to say thanks. Area is going to be addressed with the project. So we're, we're addressing all of the high priority areas. Um, and if there is, you know, as you get into this, as you can imagine, the, the sand is quite silty. And so piles, although that was one of our many strategies, um, they may be a lot deeper than anticipated, which adds costs. So we are working with the contractors on other strategies other than just driving piles. But our intent is to address the high priority areas and then to the medium priority areas, basically extending, you know, um, maximizing the use of the available funds that we have. Thank you very much. Uh, that's been a real exemplary action that you all did to do things so quickly and to stabilize uh, what could have been a very dangerous situation. Thank you. Any other commissioner comments? Anything else in the workshop? I'm looking for Herman. I think he's out getting us ready for the uh, bus. Uh, Jennifer, is there anything you want to say about the bus before we get on it? And Jennifer and Herman and all the staff, thank you so much for all the work you put into this. This is really going to be a good trip. Thank you. And Commissioner Vasquez. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. We'll see everybody on.